Tim, the inquiry reviewed some 70,000 documents and had about six weeks of hearings, yet we still don't know who made that decision to hire private security. Has it been a waste of time? Well, good morning, Danica, and good morning to your viewers right around Australia. This report has let Victorians down. This report was a sham, it was a waste of money, it was a waste of time, it was set up to fail from the very beginning. I mean, uh, former Judge Coates said in her report that she couldn't investigate ministers properly. I mean, we, we, she never had a hope of getting to the bottom of this because of the terms of reference that were probably written by Chris Eccles and Daniel Andrews in order to shield them from uh, their culpability in their decision making that led to private security being appointed to manage hotel quarantine that was totally inappropriate that resulted in the second wave with 801 victorians passing away 200,000 people losing their job uh, students losing a year of school a mental health crisis all because daniel andrews and the victorian labor government decided to use untrained private security security that no other state and territory did and no other state and territory has had a second wave like Victoria. Yesterday, we saw the Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews come out in front of the media and apologise for the wrongs. Is that enough? No, it's not enough at all. And it wasn't really an apology. He said he was sorry, but he didn't take accountability and responsibility for his decision making, his culpability in starting the second wave of coronavirus that resulted in the world's longest lockdown for four months. Victorians locked in their homes for 22 hours a day. Now, this is the week of Christmas. Victorians want to forget about what was the hell of the last, well, the, the four months between July and October. But uh, I think that it is, it is incumbent upon Daniel Andrews to front up, to be accountable and to resign, resign for the havoc that he caused in Victoria and ultimately the rest of the nation. I mean, 60% of JobKeeper recipients are in Victoria. This has cost our nation billions and billions of dollars. And out of respect for the families of the 801 dead, Daniel Andrews should go, he should resign, he should pack his bags now, because he knows deep down that he decided to use private security. He might never, ever admit that publicly. But everyone knows that it's him and his office, that nothing gets done in this government here in Victoria unless Why? him and his office tick off on it. Why does he need to resign, though, uh, Tim Smith? Because in the end, Victoria's now gone about more than 50 days without any community transmission. Are you saying that his strategy didn't work? He started the second wave. His government started the second wave. If any private business anywhere in Australia caused the deaths of 800 people through their negligence, they would be prosecuted. Well, Daniel Andrews hasn't even had adverse findings made against him in a report that was set up to fail from the outset. So, yes, I do passionately believe that this man should resign. His responses yesterday were a complete insult to Victorians who have suffered so much because of his government's incompetence and to the families of the 801 dead, he ought to go. The former health minister has come out very scathing of the report. Is it appropriate for Jenny McCarkos to be criticising the Premier and to, to be making these accusations? Well, absolutely. I mean, Jenny McCarkos knows, like the rest of us in Spring Street, that nothing happens in the Victorian government without Daniel Andrews and his office ticking off in it. Jenny McCarkos essentially called the Premier a liar. She said that the Cote report didn't get to the bottom of... Um, who made that fateful decision to use private security? And I just think that, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire, and a loyal Labor person like Jenny McCarkos, a once former friend of the Premier, I mean, she's called him out, and she said that basically this man is a liar and his phone records must be made public. Now, she wouldn't have said that unless she thought that he had something to hide, and something to hide he but certainly does she, have, is, because I is, believe... Is Jenny McCarkos just being bitter about the whole process? I mean, she was there uh, in the ministry from the very beginning. Uh, she resigned midway through, but she was essentially there at the, at the start. So is it appropriate for her to now come out all these months later and make these comments? Absolutely. I mean, Jenny McCarkos is a very loyal 
Labor person who essentially yesterday had her political corpse exhumed by the Premier only to have his bus run over it again. I mean, she's called him out and his culpability in what is the greatest public administration failure in our nation's history. Uh, and for her to do that just shows you where the culpability for this disaster lies. And I would encourage everyone to read her statement because it is damning about not just the Cote inquiry, not just the way that uh, she was poorly briefed in her view by the Chief Health Officer, but particularly Daniel Andrews and his officer's role in what has been an absolute catastrophe for the state of Victoria. Well, it certainly has been an ongoing saga. Tim Smith, we have to leave it there. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thanks, Danica.